Hey YouTube fam and pilots, if you like what you see on the channel, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button to get some more drone and game goodness. Thank you, and here's your video. Alright, so let's get this flight controller um, pre-soldered, or tinned as you will. Let's lay down our flux at the solder points that we're going to use. Um, now this is an option. UART1 can be used for your smart audio on your VTX. It's if you're going to use smart audio which basically allows you to use your remote to, to control your VTX settings then um, use general rule of thumb UART1 to do that. UART2 which is at the, toward the top of the flight controller you're going to be using your receive and transmit pads for your crossfire or your ELRS. So I'm going to go ahead and start um, tending these pads. Uh, this build is going to feature a buzzer, so there's a, a separate dedicated buzzer spot, negative and positive, on the board. We're going to be using that as well. And the buzzer has a built-in LED set. Um, it's four LEDs. So we're going to use the dedicated LED pad on a flight controller. This is a beautiful example of a simple build flight controller. F405 with everything laid out. Plenty of pads. Highly recommended. It's one of those simple, if you're just going to fly a, a drone like this, go for this as your first controller you know either iFlight or Speedy B for the win for your first build hands down all right so I'm gonna go for my VTX okay it's me from the slight future here um, this Speedy B F405 V3 flight controller features not only a 9 volt but a 5 volt as well okay so I'm here to tell you that if you're using a small voltage VTX like a Speedy VTX 800 or similar, you're going to not solder the hot onto this 9 volt, but you're going to be hitting this 5 volt pad instead. So pay attention to your voltage input required through whatever VTX you're using. The example I'm using this video can handle up to, I think, 22 or 27 volts. But I am doing another build in a future video that you're going to see where I'm using the Speedy B TX800 and the maximum voltage that that thing can handle is 5 volts. So I'm, I just noticed that and I almost, I'm glad I didn't put a battery to this thing yet. So. Just pay attention to your VTX input. Use the 5 volt, which is slightly above the 9, and don't fry your VTX. Alright. Ground, um, 9 volt hot. Yeah, make sure you have your um your flux on your pads already okay so the crossfire nano uses a 5 volt ground and your two um you are two connections you receive and transmit and the flux really does help the solder from creating a bridge Okay, buzzer since I'm going to use those. Okay, and the LED pads as well because we are going to use that for that LED buzzer combo thing that I have. That's iFlight piece, by the way. Okay, also we're going to go ahead and hit up the three solder points for the, your camera connection. I'm going to go ahead and run the camera straight off the flight controller. There's 
a way to run the camera either straight from battery power um, but I tend to use the flight controller connections so a power spike especially with those higher powered um, 6s batteries you can get a spike as soon as you plug them in so i let the connection to the flight controller handle that that'll typically be the red the black and yellow from your analog camera like i said this is an analog build so and i believe that is it okay so i do plan on running the vtx in this separate section here right underneath the XT60, this little area here. So I'm gonna use the very, very awesome double-sided Gorilla Sticky, Sticky Tape that I have. This is a must. This is good stuff. I do tend to go with the 3M1, a little bit more preferable, but right now I'm out of it and this is my backup, so I'm about to Go ahead and pop this VTX in place. We're going to go ahead and just kind of get an idea of how much wiring and where the wire is going to be reaching. And of course, you definitely have more than enough in this case right there. So, and I'm going to mount the VTX with the heat sink, fa the heat sink facing up so that fresh air hits that up really really nice while the drone's flying this is a mach 3 vtx out of one of my long ranges um it's a spare one because i turned that long range into a digital so this is a good vtx to use for your analog and it's an extra so all right so my red black and yellow vtx wires I'm going to go ahead and pre-tin these things so I can get them stuck to the pad there. Should be pretty quick and easy. Alright. Of course, rule of thumb, grab your wires and twist. A lot more of the newer and current FPV builds have all the grouped wires that have a ground twisted around or with the ground. So we're going to do that. You don't necessarily have to twist it tight. Just enough where the grouped wires will stay together. Like that. Okay, VTX hot. It's a 9 volt on the pad on this particular one right here. VTX ground to its dedicated ground pad right there. Let's scooch that over a little bit so it doesn't bridge and VTX video signal right there do a little tug to make sure they are nice and solid in there and there you go your VTX is now connected dropping stuff right there and the wire is twisted good next up mm. oh I need to tin my camera connections sorry about that yeah okay red yellow and black for ground five holder cam ground and cam on the flight controller is your yellow video cable 
All right, so next up, we are going to do this little guy, the crossfire receiver. Um, I'm going to pre-tin the, pre the connections there. Um, red for 5 volt, black for ground, and white for TX, and yellow for RX. Now when this goes to the flight controller, you're going to connect your TX to the RX pad on the flight controller. So TX from the receiver to RX on the flight controller. You go to vice versa that, RX on the receiver to TX on the flight controller. Rule of thumb. Or else it's just not going to work. So let's go ahead and get some flux on this. Put my eyeballs back on. Now since I'm going to mount this with the bind button facing an open area where I can get to it, I'm going to come up from the bottom of the receiver and solder my wires in. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and reattach the antenna to the receiver. Just be very, very careful when you do that you don't bend either the clip of the antenna or the pin that's on the receiver. Just be very careful. Um, I'm going to follow this up by using a clear piece of the uh, heat shrink wrap that came with the receiver. It'll make it a lot easier to mount onto the frame as I plan to do so. All right, there is the receiver wired up nice and clean. All right, I know I wanted to go ahead and shrink wrap the receiver, um, but I went ahead and changed my mind. I'm gonna do the, the sticky double side rubber tape for this thing. Um, the shrink wrap would have given me a little bit of a hard time as far as the bind button on the receiver was concerned and I want to be able to get to that pretty easy so I'll definitely secure it in place like I do with all my builds and I'll show you here pretty soon how to do that alright so my plan for this whole uh, installing the receiver I'm going to actually run the wiring underneath the flight controller and bring it back up to the front where the solder points are. The receiver itself is going to be mounted about mid to rear on the top plate of the frame. Since I'm going to be using 35 millimeter standoffs, uh, this thing's going to be a tall boy. It's not going to be squished at all. Um, I should have plenty of room to do this without interfering with my um, my strap feeds right here because I'm going to top mount the battery as well. So let's see how that turns out. All right, let's go ahead and connect this receiver. I've run my wires underneath my flight controller. Black for ground. Got red for the V45 pad that's on this flight controller. Let's grab it right. Okay, like I had mentioned before.
that white is on the TX. So on the flight controller, you are going to connect that to RX. Once again, try to get that solder to cover the wire completely, the exposed part of that wire. And this last one is the yellow, which is connected to RX on the receiver. Thus, TX on the flight controller. There we go. Flight controller direction. Now, nowadays with Betaflight, that's not really all too important, but there's a marker on the flight controller that shows you the direction of forward. And typically, your flight controller matches direction with your ESC as far as the communication plug from the ESC to the flight controller. Um, so typically that's in the forward facing direction so you pretty much can't go wrong there and if you do once again just look up uh, tutorials on beta flight on how to fix that without having to tear your quad apart and resoldering everything but for now just industry standard your flight controller is marked in with an arrow pointing out the forward direction Next connection on my list is going to be your camera cable. You want to make it long enough where you can twist it and have enough slack where you can tilt your camera in the various degrees of tilt without having to snag your, your wire simple analog connection uh, you have yellow for video black for ground red for hot this is a run cam uh, yes run cam racer nano 2 and on the back of the camera itself is typical run cam it shows you your connections this camera can handle from 5 to 36 volt And it also has an extra pin for a menu. So I know there's a few of these cameras that have a little dedicated joystick PCB where you can do all of your settings as far as the camera is concerned with that little PCB. Um, I did not get one with this Runcam Nano, but I've used this Runcam Nano on a racing quad and it works perfectly. So we're going to use it for this quad. I've got different size cameras here. I've got a Fox here, classic FPV. This is, um, I mean, com compared size difference is pretty obvious. But since I know this is perfectly good working camera out of the box, I'm going to use this camera. So, so far this build is going pretty swimming, swimmingly well. can't say too much about the recording aspect though I'm trying many different things here and also I've got a lot of noise in the background it's still winter and my office is in the basement and I have a furnace pretty close to me so before I could get my walls and my soundproofing up you're gonna hear some noise these little wires are kind of hard to fan out so as long as you tin them it should be all right I'm going to pull the plug from, separate the plug from the camera. Just be careful and grab it as far up the plug as you can and kind of wiggle it out so you don't break the header going into the camera. It's still workable, it's just a pain to get that going if you should break it. All right. 
once again this flight controller is beautifully labeled for your connections makes everything easy 5 volt to red yellow to cam and black to ground All right. And this is going to be another wire that gets twisted. Actually, this is the number one wire that they recommend you twisting before popping into that camera. It's supposed to clean up your video signal. All right, as you can now see, everything up to this point soldered in pretty solid. Um, there's some flux I have to clean up, but I will take care of that here soon. The next and final thing is going to be our beeper. There's a separate section right there for the LED portion of it, and then over... Whoa, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Here is our beeper solder point. All right, so on my build, I'm actually going to locate um, my beacon beeper right on the front of the quad, right at that spot right there. You want to try to get as much as any of your add-ons caged in by the quad itself that way if you do catch a branch or um like rock or something anything that can and you lose your quad anything that you added to the quad uh the protection of the frame will help uh, minimize the possibility of your beeper getting ripped out or any other part like your gps so try to keep them inside the frame as much as possible so yeah that's where I'm sticking that and then I'm gonna go ahead and route the connection wires to the underside of the flight controller and the wiring will end up on this side since that's where your solder points are located at. Um, I showed you earlier these pads on the flight controller here. They were kind of gunky. Now they're clean. Uh, use some rubbing alcohol and probably shop towels or paper towels. And pretty much you can saturate that and kind of give it a good, put some oomph into it and give it a good rub and they'll come nice and clean for you. All right, let's go ahead and reroute this. All right, I've run my beeper wires underneath the flight controller. And now let's get them soldered. There's four wires that solder in to this beeper. Uh, there's a five volt positive, a common ground, a, um, all right, yep, red for five volt positive, black right there for common ground buzzer negative is going to be this light blue and LED is going to be that white and there's two spots on that pad as you can see you have the 5 volt the buzzer positive buzzer negative and then pretty close to that the LED section there which has its own LED ground and 5 volt so either one of those five volts to do, you're just going to run, since this is a buzzer LED combo and it's got a common ground, you're only going to need to run that buzzer negative to the buzzer negative pad 
right there, right next to the screw. In this case, in this Speedy B flight controller. All right, soldering iron's nice and heated up. Remember guys, tweezers, tweezers are an important tool. Make sure you use them. Okay. These wires are tinned up, ready to go. So all we have to do is pop them in, be good to go. Try to grab as close as the end of the wire as you can. All right. All right, guys. That's about it. So all the features that I wanted to get on this flight controller are there. Here's where the crossfire, your receiver on this flight controller here. Your camera signal feed from the camera going in is right here in this section. This bundle of wires here is your communication between the flight controller and the ESC underneath it. I have my VTX wiring twisted and soldered here. And then my buzzer wiring here and the LED control wire here. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm not gonna run a GPS on this particular build. Like I said, this is a simple ice build. So the hardest part is over. So let's get this thing, um, any of the hanging pieces, we're gonna print some 3D print out for it. And let's get this thing finalized and put together.